Hello, welcome back to the Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. In today's video, I'll be showing you some really nice vintage thrift flips, but first, today's fun fact. I've been playing piano since I was about eight years old. My favorite piece to play is River Flows in You by Iruma. So you know the deal. I told you a fun fact about me. Now you leave me a fun fact about you down in the comments. Now on to the DIYs. I found this little wooden decoration at the Goodwill for just over a dollar and I thought it would be a good base to build something on. So I'm going to pair it with this other thing that I found from Goodwill that I think is very farmhouse and pretty vintage with those enamel numbers on it and it was a good price as well. So I'm going to put these two decorations together to make my own custom mug rack. I used a heaping helping of E6000 to attach the two pieces together and then I weighted it down with a big old can of baked beans and Lucy Cat's tuna. I came back to it the next morning after the glue was completely set and I painted the wooden pieces with two coats of white chalk paint and I also painted the bottom metal piece, everything but the hooks, and trying really hard not to paint over those enamel numbers. And when the paint was dry, I went back and did a little wet distressing with an old rag just around the edges of the metal piece, making it look worn, old, and vintage. And this is how she turned out. I'm totally happy with how I took these two inexpensive items from Goodwill and made them into their own unique thing. Today I'd like to introduce to you the newest member of our family. Her name is Emma. She is the Trifo Robot Vacuum Slash Mop that I received from the Trifo Company to review, give you my thoughts and opinions on it, and I think this one's going to be a keeper. This is labeled a pet version of a robot vacuum because you can remove the brush for a pet hair tangle free vacuuming experience. A few of the features that it boasts is its smart navigation, which I will demonstrate for you once we start our little test. It has a large capacity dust bin. It will run up to 110 minutes on one single charge. And it has three times more suction power than most other robot vacuums. One of the things that I like about this robot vacuum is this dustbin is located on the top of the unit and so it's a lot easier to remove and empty than some others. And what makes this a pet vacuum is that you can remove the brush and replace it with this piece that will suck the pet hair directly up into the collection bin. Emma also comes with a mopping feature. So this is the water reservoir and you fill it in this little hole right here. It will hold enough to mop about 20 minutes and then you'll need to replace the water. It just Velcros onto the bottom of your vacuum and they do supply you with 10 mop pads to get you started. Emma is compatible with Alexa and Google Assistant, so you can voice command your vacuum to turn on and turn off. You can download the Trifo app and run Emma from your phone. There's a lot of conveniences to the Trifo app and help you keep up with your maintenance with your vacuum. But if you prefer not to use the app, you can also just use Emma manually with her buttons. First off, you can see that her nice big wheels make it no problem for her to go from hardwood to a rug or carpet. Secondly, I wanna point out that navigation that she has. 
And that means she's not randomly going in some weird pattern. She's going up one side, turns around, and comes back. And that's the way she's going to go over your entire house. In a house with cats, this is an evil necessity. It's a cat scratcher. And so I have these little pieces of cardboard on my floor a lot. So we're going to see how Emma can tackle this mess. And she picked them up without blowing them under the couch. Next, let's test the mopping function. Little cat paws can get into messes and leave things on your floor. So let's see how she does. You can see that the mopping pad did wipe up the mess. So I believe this would be handy for smaller little messes. And here's the evidence that it is in fact cleaning the floor. And this is all the dirt and hair that it picked up. This is so embarrassing. After only about 10 minutes of work. I feel like this vacuum is a really good quality for its price point. Plus, it's got a lot of really nice convenient features that you wouldn't find for similar robots at the same price. So I'm going to leave a link in my description box where you can go to their Amazon store and purchase your own Emma pet robot. But if you will purchase between June 13th through the 19th, they will be having a sale coupon where you can apply a $70 off coupon to your Amazon purchase, making this vacuum only $129.99. I think Emma is a good addition for my house, and I think she'll be a good addition for your house too. Now for the next thrift flip, I found this enamelware pot at a junk store actually. I paid a couple dollars for it, and oh, I just love the colors. I hardly ever find them in this uh, aqua blue trim. You see them in black a lot and red, but I just love this aqua blue. Now, I, it's just perfectly cute on its own, but I want to upgrade it just a little bit. I don't want to do anything to it that would completely change it forever. I want it to be temporary if I do anything. So I'm using this vinyl that you can find right now at the Dollar Tree and it looks like it's made for the Cricut Joy because it's a small roll of vinyl. I mean like a smaller size. But I thought I would just cut a little strip of it just to add a little whimsical cottageness vintage feel <laughs> to this already adorable enamelware pan. And the idea being that if I ever get tired of this pattern and I want to use the pan just by itself, then I can totally remove this and it'd be just the way it was when I bought it. Then I thought it would be really cute to have a bird's nest inside of this pan. And I didn't have any Spanish moss or any twiggy looking stuff that I could use for a bird's nest. So I decided to use this plasticky flower stuff that I got at the Dollar Tree a while ago. I had a ceramic little blue bird, but I didn't feel like he really the color of him matched the pan so well. So I gave him a couple of coats of white chalk paint and then I wet distressed around his details to make him look worn and vintage. And then I arranged it all inside of the pan. Now, I didn't hot glue any of my stuff down because I wanted it to be able to be removed in the future if I got tired of it. And like I said, if I wanted this pan to go back to its original state, then I can remove everything and do something else with it. But if you want to keep yours like this, then by all means, use some hot glue and hot glue everything down in place. Next is this acrylic tissue box holder that I got at Goodwill for a little over $3. And I wasn't really tickled with the colors of it, but I did like how it had all these raised leaf details on it. 
And so I thought I could paint over it and do some sort of a distressing that would bring those raised details out. And so I'll show you how I did it. The first step is to take some acrylic paint. This is important an acrylic paint, whatever color you want the raised portion to show through. And I'm using a dark brown, but it needs to be acrylic. That way, when you go back to wet distress, it won't wipe off along with your chalk paint that you're gonna put on top. So I hope this makes sense, but I'm only painting the raised parts and I'm going to dab some of that brown paint around the edges where I'm going to want to distress to make it look worn around the edges too. So just wherever you want the distressed look to be, that's where you're going to put this color of acrylic paint. Making sure that your first color of paint is completely dry, then do about two coats of white chalk paint. Then after the white chalk paint is dry, take your wet rag or paper towel and go over the edges and the raised parts where you want your details to show. And like magic, that old dated acrylic tissue box holder becomes a farmhouse vintage piece that I'm gonna be so happy to hide those ugly tissue boxes with. Now, once upon a time, when I found these birdhouses new in the store, I was just dying to have them. I loved them so much, but now they don't really fit in with my decor. So I found these at the junk store for a couple bucks a piece, and I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to transform it to match my stuff a little better. So as with a lot of DIYs on my channel, I'm gonna start out with a couple of coats of Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. This birdhouse had a golden knob on the top of it that I wanted to paint black, so I'm just using some black chalk paint. To give it more of a farmhouse look, I'm going to decoupage one of these napkins. Well, actually, it'll take a couple. A couple of these napkins that I got from Target. It's the Magnolia Hearth and Hand line, and I don't know if you can get them now. I have purchased these probably about a year ago by now, but this is what I'm going to use to decoupage the roof of the birdhouse. Now, if you're new to using napkins for decoupaging, it's really super simple. The first thing you need to do is peel away all the other layers of the napkin except for the printed one. So this particular napkin had three layers. Some have two, some have three. There may even be some that have more, I don't know. But this one had three layers. You peel away the blank ones, leaving only the printed one. Of course, this will be personalized to whatever you're covering, trying to decoupage, but I took this section by section on the roof of this birdhouse. Now we'll talk about my medium that I'm using for decoupage. And what it is, is just a 50-50 mixture of Elmer's white glue and water. Of course, you can use Mod Podge, but I find that when you're using napkins for Mod Podge projects, it's a lot easier when you're working with a thinner type of Mod Podge. So either you can water down some Mod Podge or you can make your own personal mixture like I did. Like I said, 50-50, half water, half Elmer's glue, and it works perfectly. I find that using my own mixture of Mod Podge makes the air bubbles and the wrinkles a lot less. So then you just put down a layer of the Mod Podge and then put your napkin in place, smooth it out as best you can, and then put another layer of Mod Podge on top. Since I was going section by section and I'm not patient enough to let that dry before I move on to the next section, I blast mine with a hot hair dryer to get it dry really quick, which 
you know, take note. If you do that with decoupage, a lot of times, or a Mod Podge, it will bubble up on you, so be careful. Maybe use a cool setting. I don't know if that'll work or not, but the hot setting worked fine for me, and it didn't bubble up, so maybe I was just lucky today. But the way I'm going to do my edges, instead of cutting them with scissors to make it more vintage and worn looking, I'm dipping a small paintbrush into some just plain water, and then I'm going along the edge and I'm ripping it off. After I got the whole roof covered, then I went back with one more layer of Mod Podge just to make sure everything was sealed in. And the final thing I did to my birdhouse was to take a sanding block, which is a really, really fine grit, and I sanded along the edges of the roof, and I sanded along the edges of all the sides of the birdhouse to make it vintage and worn. Oh my goodness gracious, when I am antiquing or in the junk store or thrifting, I can hardly pass up a glass jar. <laughs> and I ran on to these three. They were only a dollar a piece. My goodness, how I just adored them. And so I'm going to vintage them up with some IOD, Iron Orchid Designs, rub-on transfers. And I picked this batch to use for these particular transfers because I thought they needed some cute labels. And so you can print off labels on your uh, computer using printer paper and do whatever transfer method that you like. But since I do have these IOD transfers, I figured I'd use them. And they really couldn't be easier to use. All you do is cut out the transfer that you want to use and then peel off its white paper backing. Make sure you have it positioned where you want it to go before you let it touch the glass, and then use the stick to rub it into place. And, or if you don't have the stick, they all come with a stick, but if you've lost yours, you can use a credit card or whatever you have handy to make the transfer stick, and voila, that's it. It's done, and I just love them. Thanks for watching crafty friends. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're having an awesome Memorial Day weekend. Be safe, have fun. If you want to see more crafty videos, click the link that I provided for you right here and I'll see you next time. Bye!